Okay, everybody. Well, today, as you can see, I got a deer hanging behind me. Now, before we go any further, before I do any more anything, I want you to realize there's going to be some graphics in this. This isn't going to be nice, cheesy, pleasy, hello, everybody, uh, the world is right uh, kind of video. There is going to be blood. There is going to be goo. There is going to be unpleasantness in this. So, with that being said... You proceed at your own risk. I don't want to hear any shit about it in the comments. If you don't want to see blood and gore, don't go any further. Turn the video off. On a better note, this doe that I've got behind me was my very first archery kill. Uh, she's a big girl. She, uh, well, as you can see, I'm 6'5", I'm and her legs reach higher than my head. But you can see she's got some good size to her. I'm going to get a lot of good meat off of her. A uh, friend of mine, Brian Wenzel, he hooked me up with a bow. And another buddy of mine sold me some arrows. I got some broadheads and whatnot. And, well, I made my first harvest this year. I ha I've had the bow maybe two and a half months, maybe three months. But anyway, I got a beautiful harvest on her. Perfect long shot, double long shot. She ran about 40 yards, did the spin roll, and died. Well, today we're going to discuss how to skin a deer. Now, there's thousands of ways to do this. This is my way of doing it. It's not bad. It's not good. It's my way. If you have your way, that's great. It may Maybe I'll show you something that you didn't think of, or maybe somebody will comment something that I've never thought of. But I've been out, I've been butchering deer for 30 plus years. One thing I've learned is after you start your initial cuts, try to use your knife as little as possible. Now, I had a friend of mine, Robert, Rob Gray, over in uh, Michigan, runs a little company called RHG Custom, or Handmade Knives. You can find him on the internet. Uh, he's got a Facebook page. Uh, I believe he's got an Instagram. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I know he's got a Facebook page, and he's working on a web page. Uh, give him a look. Look, see on Facebook. He makes some damn good knives. This one is his Nemesic, Nemesic knife. I use this. This is my butchering knife. I had him make make for me. Uh, carbon steel, beautiful knife, razor sharp, gets the job done. This is the only knife that I use to skin my deer with. I don't use anything else. This is it. This and these two implements that were given to me by, at birth. That's all you need to skin a deer. That's it. You don't need all these fancy bullshit. There's easier ways. You know, you can hook the hide to put a start the hide, put a golf ball in it, roll it over, tie something around that, and tie it to a car or a truck or whatever, and pull the hide off that way, which is perfectly acceptable. It works. Just make sure that wherever you're hanging your animal from, that you've got a good solid foundation to do that with. Now, some people, as you can see, I have, I field dressed her. Uh, some people don't do that. They do that after they skin. Like I said, there's no right and wrong way. This is my way. So what I've done, as you can see, I've already done one leg right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I do the other leg. Now, you can see here that it's been cut. But the meat hasn't been cut. Just the hide has been cut. Because I use a little item called, it's called a butt out. And what it, it's this most, <laughs> it's this devilishly looking thing. That's about that long. It's bright orange. It's got a rounded nose with some sharp implements on the end of it. You take it and you ram that into the deer's anus. You turn it, pull, and it pulls out a big section of the intestines. You cut that off, set it aside, and then when you feel dressed, the intestines come out and you don't have to do any of the cutting in here. So it makes it for a little bit cleaner job. Now, one of the other things I will say, don't do. Don't cut off these tarsal glands right here. There's no need in it. That's it's an old superstition that you need to cut those off. What hunters will do is come in, the first thing they'll do is slice those off with their knife. They get the, they get the buck, especially a nice buck. They'll get those that he's been doing scenting and, you know, urinating on them and rubbing them and making them all fancy smancy and doing his scrapes and rubs and scrapes, I mean, and getting them all stinky. And a hunter will come in and think, I got to get them off to get before it gets to my meat. Well, then they get home, they cut them off, they get home, they butcher their deer with the same goddamn knife, 
And now that meat's tainted by the taste of his musk and urine and whatnot because they cut them tarsal glands off. Don't cut them off until after you're done. Until after the meat's been harvested and you're getting ready to throw away the scraps. Then cut those off, put them in a baggie, and hang them up. Or use a completely different knife to cut those off. Cut them off, put that knife away, get your other knife out, and go to it. I don't cut them off because I don't use them. So they stay there. But one of the things I do do is I tan hides. So the, the reason why I'm kind of putting this video out is so that you'll understand... You don't want to cut this, you don't want to use this on the hide as much as possible because then you put nicks in the hide and it gives it an inferior look when it's when the finished quality is done. Got little nicks all over the hide, it doesn't look real good. So, but anyway, this is my method. As you can see, I've got her hung up on a gambrel, and here's the tendon right here into this joint. Do not cut that tendon because you cut that tendon, this whole thing's going to come crashing down. This tendon and the tendon on the other side are the two, two supporting factors that's keeping this deer hanging. Now, on this side, what you'll do, okay, what you should do, once you've got her open at the belly, like I have here, once you, what you, the next step is to come in and find a mark, and usually right below the gambrel is pretty good. Just go ahead and cut the hide, because there's nothing but bone right here. As you can hear, that's bone. That's, that's solid bone right there. And you can see that this knife is razor sharp. My buddy Rob cut right down to the center. If you have to make a second cut, that's fine. You can see I can start pulling it away from the meat. And you're going to have hair fall. That's that's their white tail. There's nothing you can do about that. Hey, okay, I get that started, and using good old brute force to get it going as much as I can. Some say I'm working too hard, but I like the way I do it. It works for me, and that's what I've been saying from the get go. Another note, unless, oh, wow, you can go ahead and do this the day you bring your deer home, you know, or if you're at camp and you want to get her to cool down real quick or get him to cool down real quick because it's hot outside or, you know, it's not at the pristine temperatures of storing a deer for three or four days. What it, which, which it has been for me, because I shot this deer on Wednesday, and here it is Friday, so. Um, but it's been, the temperatures have been fine for me. Now, I am using my knife a little bit here because I'm near the tendon, and I want to make sure that I'm getting... It away from the tendon before I cut. Because like I said, you don't want to cut that tendon because if you do, lo and behold, your whole system is going to come falling down. There. Now that I got that done, there we go. And you may need to, as you go along, use your knife to convince, <laughs> as it were, the hide to let go in spots. But as you can see now, it's coming right off with no issues. Now I'm at the tail, okay? And 
what I'm going to do is just cut through, cut, find a joint in the bone, If it won't come, don't go cranking on it because all you'll do is dull your knife. Take your time. There it goes. There it goes. Starting to come loose. I didn't get it in the joint. That's why it was being stubborn. Now the deer is making me look like an asshole. <laughs> goes how to get it in the joint like I said now at this point in time she'll skin like a dream okay you can go ahead I'm gonna pause this so I can get down a little bit lower and show you here okay of what I'm talking about but at this time you don't have to do this step okay now we're down lower here's her chest when I field dress, I only come to right here because that's all the further I need to go. Now, you can just keep going when you start pulling this hide down. You can just keep going. Hold on. Damn dog. Sorry, my dog was chasing the chickens. Um, you can just keep peeling, 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 peeling right down off her front leg and off of her head. Okay, so it kind of makes like a, a cape or a hood or something. And then cut her head off, cut her legs off at the joint, and you have a completely skinned deer hide. Another way you can do that is you can cut up through here, up to the center point right here. Cut up, come up, center point, and come up and pull it down. That's another way to do it. So, I'm just showing you a couple different options. This is the way I do it. Keep working back and forth, side to side, and keep pulling. Now see here, I'm starting to pull meat away. It's not coming out clean, see? So here, just be careful. And cut them, the strands of meat, the membrane, or as it were. And pull some more. Back over to this side. See, it's doing the same thing on this side. So, just grab your knife. Be very careful to only cut the meat and the fat. 
You can tell this girl was eating. She had some fat built up on her. Now that's not a waste either. Like this chunk here. Oh no. Don't throw that shit away. And the reason why I say that is because you can use that for so many things once you render it down. Leather conditioner. Medicine. Lip balm. Soap. The list is long and expansive as to what you can do. You can make candles. You can make, uh, you know, scented bathroom perfumes for your wife. Candles. <clears throat> now, before I go any further, we're getting into the location of where my arrow hit. So there's going to be some dark black meat. And that's okay, because that's the damage that happened when it got hit, when I hit it. So, now see how easy this comes down? Now, this does work better when the deer is warm. <sighs> I will admit that. Yeah. Now here at the chest. Give it a little bit of help. That's all I did. Now, you want to be careful here, because you can rip the hide the wrong way. Which is exactly what you don't want to do, especially if you're like me and you want to tan it. Because if you rip it the wrong way, then you've got to spend extra time fixing it down the road. Now you can see that's where the arrow went in. We're getting real close to the location of where I arrowed her. Should be making itself prevalent any second now. Now, if you have weak hands or up there in age where you don't have your strength anymore, this is probably not the best method for you to use. Well, as you can see, we made pretty good progression. I've even got the legs down. Uh, I don't know if you can see those. Hold on. Okay. Now you can. You can see the hole where my arrow went through. Now my shot was a little high. It should have been down around in here. But it still turned into a double long shot. So we're good. Anyway, as you can see, I've got it pulled down off of the legs, almost as far as I want it. It's, it's a little difficult at this stage to get it there. And what I do is when I get enough room in there, I'll take my boot and stick my foot in there and push down like this. Bounce on it a little bit, and that hide slides right down to where I want it. Boom. 
Now what I'll do is get the hacksaw and just go ahead and whack that off right there. Yep. I'll just cut that right through. Right there. Boom. Zada bing. Now the neck is a different story. You may have to get in here with your knife and do a little cutting. Okay. Get the uh, the hide to come off of the neck at places. But that's going to happen. Um, it's not a big deal. Some people would cut it off right here and say hell with it. But I like to take the neck all the way to the base of the skull. Because one, it gives you all that hide. And two, there's a lot of meat in that neck. That's good for like stews and stuff like that. So... But that's totally your call. At this point in time, you could go ahead and cut through all that meat, get to the get to the spine, cut the spine, boom, you're done. Throw it away and onto your meat if you're not keeping the hide. But I keep the hide, like I said, I tan it. I make it into buckskins, that kind of thing. So I'm going to work my way all the way down to the base of the skull and then disconnect the head, and I'll show you the final result. Here's another little thing I want to discuss. While you're doing this, okay, when you're making your cuts... Don't go big, long, sweeping cuts. Do little short ones. Put pressure on the hide like this. And do very light, shallow cuts. Just enough to cut that membrane that's holding the skin to the meat. Okay? Because in that way, especially if you're saving the hide. If you're not saving the hide, it don't matter. But if you're saving the hide, like I do, you want short, shallow cuts. Towards the meat, not towards the hide, okay? That will enable, one, that will keep your nicks down off of the hide itself. The knife marks off the hide and won't ruin it and give it a bad appearance. And two, it won't nick the hide <laughs> as easily. Okay, it's short little... And use the upper th uh, 16th of your knife. You only want to use from about right where my thumbnail is up. That's my dog, Roscoe. From my thumbnail up to the tip. That's the only part that you want to use on this subject, on this section. Um, you don't want to be doing a whole blade swipe because all you're going to do is put a big cut in that hide. And then you might as well just toss it. Because you put such a big cut in it, then it's going to be hard to get it to... So upright. And it'll be noticeable in the final product. That's why when you do this process, you should have a damn good knife. Um... What the hell is this? Some of you may be asking, you know, why you got to be so careful with the with the uh, hide and if you're going to tan it and all that. Well, very simply, a well-tanned buckskin shirt, you know, that's done in the traditional sense, the way the Indians used to do it, mountain men used to do it, the way the Eastern long hunters used to do it, which is what persona I try to portray, even with my beard, yes. Um, you can get, for a good smoked, brain-tanned, hand-processed deer, you can get, or hide, I'm sorry, you can get upwards of... $150, $200, depending on the square footage of the hide. One that doesn't have a lot of blemishes. One that's in uh, good shape. Yeah, you can easily, easily get a couple hundred dollars for a hide. Now, if you do a whole buckskin shirt with no decorations, just a buckskin shirt, 
that you've smoked and tanned and done all that all that work yourself, you're looking at probably four fifty to six hundred dollars for a shirt, depending on the size. A, a shirt for me, it's about five hundred dollars, five hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, because I'm a big boy. I wear three X. Well, hell, look at me. I'm six five, three hundred and twenty five pounds. A lot of it's right here, but still, you know, I need big clothes. I need big shirts. So, well, anyway. That, my friends, is how you skin a deer. That's the way I skin a deer. How about that? So, now she's going to get one more day to age some more. And uh, tomorrow, I'll start butchering her and get her in the freezer. And if you're worried about temps, the outside temperature right now is 36 degrees. I put a thermometer in her earlier, her internal temp, 41 degrees. She's perfect, perfect temperature for aging. To tenderize, give it a nice uh, flavor. Good deer. She's going to be a good deer. So, until next time, stay safe, have fun, stay outside.